Um, we've got uh, the usual gamut of PS5 Pro stuff to get through. Uh, I'm actually going to combine the first three questions into one uh, because I think they're going to be fairly short answers. So uh, let's kick off with this one from Soundwave GI. Greetings, gents! Exclamation point. I've searched high and low to find concrete evidence of the VRR range situation for the PS5 Pro. Will it be capable of 40 to 120 hertz range on unsupported titles like Xbox Series X? I mainly play games on Xbox when they fall into that situation, with Elden Ring being a great example. I always get both consoles, so now that uh, so now that my preferred will be the PS5 Pro, I'm hoping it can compete in this area. I fear that we'll still deal with plenty of games that would drop under the inag under the inadequate 48 range and be left with a less than stellar experience. Thanks and keep up the great work! Exclamation point. Well, we don't have any official word on this, right, John? But you know, we do know kind of how the Sony teams operate historically. Maybe they'll surprise us, but I'm not expecting any changes on the Pro. No, not at all. I think it's um, fundamentally there's just a difference in the way that the systems are designed to work, and Sony relies on the games themselves to trigger these 120 hertz modes, which then opens up the VR range, where Microsoft allows you to force it across the system and the software just plugs into that uh which is how they're able to get these like super wide vr window range uh because on xbox if you if you only output 60 hertz you're also much more limited in terms of what vr can do it's just because you're able to force 120 across the board that it's able to to do this properly and ps5 games that do support 120 and vrr like that it, it works great as well it's just that it's up to the developer to implement it. So I don't yeah, think it's going to change absolutely. the pro. I mean, it's a bit of a shame, isn't it, Oliver? But that is generally the way uh, that Sony tend to, to operate. Yeah, I mean, I think it'll be the same. Every indication probably is that it's going to be the same. And I would expect if there are improvements to the system, that those would carry over to regular PS5 models as well. I would not expect it to be a pro exclusive. That would be a little bit bizarre. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move on to this question from Nice Marmot. <laughs> it's a, a big Lebowski reference, I believe. Maybe I've got the pronunciation wrong. Who knows? Anyway, the question is fairly straightforward. Will we see boost mode before PS5 Pro's general release? The total silence around Elden Ring in particular and from software in general is, def is deafening. It's deafening. Um, Peter asks, IDF Crew exclamation point. As far as you are aware, does the PS5 Pro offer anything akin to FPS boost where a frame rate cap can be overcome without developer intervention? My assumption is no, and that any frame rate boosts mentioned are related to those uh, those games that could not previously hold a lock on FPS target. Or, of course, where devs do indeed unlock FPS, thus allowing the extra GPU grunt room to improve frame times. Thanks and have a great week. Uh, okay, cheers for that. Um, well, I think ultimately there has been a total silence around boost mode. We still don't really know how it works. Um, the only sort of thing that we could apply to it is that the leaked teraflop number for the GPU suggests clock speeds that are broadly equivalent to the standard PlayStation 5. So to get any kind of boost on the GPU side, it follows that it must be using all of the compute units or more of them. The extent to which uh, boost mode improves PlayStation performance, we just don't know. Yeah, that's the bottom line. It's down to Sony to make um, a statement if they want to make a statement or for us to test it when it comes in. That's, that's pretty much it. Um, in terms of the FPS boost thing, well, we've seen a example of that because um, You'll recall that I did a video back in the day with mods from Illusion, where all he was essentially doing was removing the frame rate cap. There were some exceptions, like Bloodborne, for example, where they had to um, mod in code for Dark Souls 3 to support arbitrary frame rates. But most of Illusion's um, mods for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 games, latterly he did move on to PlayStation 5, um, they were just modding the game to remove the frame rate lock. So in theory, it is possible, but in practice, it's probably not going to happen. I don't think there's anything more to add to that, Oliver. I would say that's three big no's in all likelihood. Yes. For, uh, well, at least, yeah. I, I don't know. The weird thing about 
the PS5 Pro's boost mode is that if it is good and if it does offer a big enhancement, surely Sony must want to talk about that at some point prior to release, I would think, because that would be a pretty big deal. I mean, I've pitched it, but I haven't had any response. I mean, I guess the other thing, of course, is always the, um, the, the lingering... The lingering issue that they don't want the standard PlayStation Five to look deficient, but at the same time, you, yeah, you do need to show that the Pro is better to justify its very existence. So I guess yeah. that's probably maybe down to launch coverage. Uh, what do you think, John? I mean, fundamentally, I just expect this stuff to work pretty much as it as it did on PS Five and PS Four Pro before it. Right? We just don't know the extent of how much it'll actually boost anything uh as far as the the actual frame rate boost boosted titles i think that's just going to come down to whether i i kind of feel like that's unlikely at this point that there's going to be any more titles that are going to be plumbed for this sort of performance boost right Mm. because there's nothing really on the ps5 side where you would expect to see this from sony and this is where their first party stuff is typically was updated. Like when they went to PS five, they updated a lot of PS four titles to support 60 FPS, but pretty much all of their PS five titles and the PS four titles that could, that they could update easily enough already have that support. Right. I mean, I guess they could add 60 FPS to the until dawn <laughs> remaster remake thing. <laughs> right. whoop de doo mm. uh, yeah. Beyond that though, I don't, I mean, I, my eyes mostly just on the boost mode stuff just to see how yeah. it actually pans out. <laughs> I, I, I think if it is good and it is effective, then you will be leaning on developers to have had implemented unlocked frame rates in their prior games. So maybe it's more of a case where older titles that we did criticize at launch for having poor performance or for having unlocked frame rates on PS5 consoles that did not work out so well are ideally positioned for PS5 Pro enhancement and less the case that the PS5 Pro will magically be able to take all those older titles to 60 FPS just somehow by removing those caps. I think you'll be depending on those developers to have, you know, possibly to have bungled those versions in the first place. 